All right, moms with swords. We only have three weeks left, y'all. After today, because we have spring break. Oh my goodness, y'all. I, we just were talking about that back there. I'm like, oh my goodness, because eight weeks. And so, yeah, today is the fifth week, right? And so, yes. Five plus three is eight, Joy. So yes, yeah, so we'll, so remember, we won't be here for spring break. Um, so yeah, three weeks left. So y'all, and I know it's kind of crazy. We start early because we want to protect y'all's May because we know the end of April, May gets crazy for moms with kids and school and parties and just all the end of school. So that's why we do it. But the great thing is we will start back in August. So um, I know it's crazy to start, but y'all, August, my husband, we have a countdown all the time. He's like, only, you know, six months until Christmas, only five months until you put all your Christmas stuff out. Like we kind of, so y'all, it's like, we're like, seriously, how many of you know, as you get older, everything goes really fast. It goes much faster, right? Goes much faster. So guess what? Christmas is going to be here before you know it. So enjoy summer. I know. (laughs) Oh, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Slow down summer. Thomas Rhett got it right. Okay. All right. So welcome, welcome, welcome. So happy for you that are here in the room and live streaming. We are so excited. Y'all, I have to just say, I'm really, this is a really beautiful day. Like the weather is beautiful, but if you know me, I'm especially excited. I might preach with even a little bit more fire today. You know why? Geraldine did have, she has had her tops off. Geraldine is my Bronco, y'all. I've named her. Anybody knows the song, Geraldine, Geraldine. That's, I can't name her Jolene, so she's Geraldine. She's had her tops off. I had to put them on this morning, but it's even better than that. What, ma- what did Alex say? I'm going to a rodeo tonight. Ah! It's my first one. Ah! So look for all the pictures. I've got my outfits in the car. It, the first one this year. I'm going, what, what did you say, Aldra? I don't know, this is the, I know, we've been in rodeos together. This is the first one of this year. Yeah. So I am leaving. The Athens rodeo is tonight. So me and most of the Georgia softball players are going to be there. So look for my outfit on my the gram later on today. (laughs) I've got several options in my car. So Sydney played, they played Georgia Tech last night and we beat them. Sorry for you Georgia Tech fans. Um, So I got back from Athens at 11. I packed up my bag for the rodeo because I'm going to leave from here, go to Chick-fil-A, head to Athens and we have our rodeo tonight. So I got my hat in the car. So I'm so excited. So woohoo! If you are new to Moms of Swords, I'm so sorry if you don't understand. I have an obsession with the rodeo. I love all things rodeo. My family, I, I have really redneck roots. And my grandfather's brother and cousin was like rodeo people. And so we have a new obsession. My girls tell, the, my girls will say it's mom's midlife crisis. But I am just, I do love, it's all things American, it's all things, if you, I'm telling you, Audra can, conf- anybody that's been to the rodeo, because I talked about it so much, so many moms with source people were like, okay, we're going to come to a rodeo, Joy. So if you've been to a rodeo, tell the people. It is so fun, it's so, cons- it's just clean, American, like they pray, y'all, when they, Sophie Kate has sung the national anthem, like, oh. It's just good, clean fun. So do not burst my bubble about all the rodeo people and how their lives are. Don't burst my bubble. <laughs> Let me just live in my snow globe, okay? So go into the Athens Rodeo tonight. Stay tuned. I will have some pictures for next week. If you don't follow me on Instagram, I'll put pictures up here next week. So I'll have lots. Okay. So excited about the rodeo. So anybody, this your first week? I'm so sorry. Lord, please. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so, I'm so glad you're here. How, did you register? I registered. This is the first. Oh, see, devil did not stop you from getting here today, sister. You're here. You are here. Woohoo! 
So on the day, I trust the Lord gets everybody here when they're supposed to be here. I love it, I love it, I love it. So we are so glad you're here. Okay, I guess really our only announcement, um, other than we have three more Moms with Swords left. Remember, we will not be here spring break. We are gonna do another Dads with Shields. We talked about that last week. It was huge success. So many of the dads loved it. So we are gonna do another Dads with Shields. We will get you guys the date. Um, we're hopefully gonna do two more. Um, and then also, this is uh, just kind of dropped in me right now. We, I am thinking through possibly something for the summer. How many of you have done our Moms with Swords stuff we've done in the summer? We've done a lot of book studies. Um, those are really popular. So I I am thinking through, praying through, just possibly nothing like this. We're not going to undertake this for the summer. We're going to let you guys. But there might be just some, I know uh, we do some play dates for some of you um, that come. We always like to do for you with younger kids. But I'm thinking about something that we can get together because it is such a long break. I mean, we're literally done the second week of April um, and we won't meet again until August. So um, we'll be thinking through. So, um, so stay tuned for that too. Um, okay, so I guess our only real um, announcement is our young lives. Oh, we love our teen moms and our young lives. We have, we have you guys have been um, uh, helping us reach our goal and I'm pretty sure we have already, um, <laughs> I am pretty sure we are already mostly at our goal so um because of something I know that's coming Andrea that she doesn't know that's coming but we want to I mean again we even we want to go above and beyond because Katya will use that money to help uh, these uh, these girls in other ways during camp so our goal is 4200 right yes 4200 want to send seven moms and their babies if you have any questions about this camp what it does so you got we got becca back here and think becca's in that that's becca in that far right becca is in the picture and then katia is here there's katia y'all know if you ever have a young lives question again the um practical ways we've talked about that providing meals um for sundays they meet they need a meal and thursdays they need a meal and child care so those are really practical ways that you guys can serve um if you have any of those questions you can always talk to katia or becca Becca, raise your hand. Um, these two precious ladies um, pour into these sweet teen mamas. So um, help us reach our goal. We're close, we're close, we're close. Um, and we only have three more weeks. So um, if you want to put cash in here, if you want to make a check, Katya, you can talk to her about Venmo. Um, you can write a check to Moms with Sores and just put, you know, Young Lives in the new, uh, in the little memo, and um, we'll make sure all that money gets to them. But we want to send them to camp. So um, we want to, we want, we want to do this. So, and I know we will. <clears throat> I know we're going to. So um, it's going to be amazing. So um, if you have any questions, always ask. Um, I'm really, really excited. We're way ahead of schedule, but that's great. Gives us more time. Um, so yeah, so stand up. Let's get right into the word. I'm ready to birth. How many of you looked at your newsletter that Joanne does? These newsletters are amazing. She does such a great job. Of course, I was at softball last night, so Joanne's like, have you read this? And I'm like, in my head, I'm like, okay, I got to get out of the bathroom because I did actually have to go to the bathroom during one of Sydney's at-bats. If you, if you know, you know. Um, but it was fine. She got a single, so I had to go to the bathroom the rest of her at bats. So, um, but Joan's like, have you read the newsletter? I'm like, yeah, in just a second. Then I finally stopped and read it. It was amazing. So if you are not getting a newsletter, see Joanne right here. We need your email. That's all you're going to have to give us is your email, which if you registered, you're already getting the newsletter. So, um, Yes, Joanne's email and your contact. So if you are not getting your newsletter and you have registered, see Joanne because we want you. That's, we have links for Young Lives or we'll have, you know, different things um, in the newsletter. So we want to make sure you're getting the newsletter. So make sure you're getting the newsletter. Um, so it's going to be great. So, um, okay, let's pray. Jesus, we thank you so much, Lord. Father, I thank you, God, for a renewed sense of joy this morning. God, I've, I've, I was heavy. I was heavy yesterday, God. I was really heavy. But God, I just, your mercies are new every morning. So God, I thank you for a renewed sense of joy. 
um, that you have even placed upon me. God, I thank you for the word that you are going to bring to every one of these moms. God, I just, I pray a renewed joy, God, for the mom that's struggling this morning, for the mom that's struggling to walk in joy. God, I just speak to that mom this morning, right now. Holy Spirit of God, Father, I just speak the joy of the Lord over you. You know who you are. I feel heavy that God is telling me that there's somebody that's listening right now that is finding it hard to find joy right now. So in the name of Jesus, I speak the joy of the Lord over you right now. The joy of the Lord will be your strength to walk you through all that you are walking through. Joy, I just speak joy. I just, I just speak joy in this atmosphere. Devil, you are a liar. You are defeated. And we just dispel every tool that you are trying to place on these moms to, to take and rob them of joy. You are not allowed. You, we are staking a no trespassing sign over the minds and the hearts of these moms in this room right now. The joy of the Lord is your strength. I speak that into this atmosphere. God, I speak it. I thank you that it is heavy right now, heavy on me right now to speak that out. Where there is hopelessness, God, you bring hope. Where there is faithlessness, God, you bring faith. Where there is fear, God, you bring courage. In the name of Jesus, we will believe in spite of what we see. We are praying through knowing, God, that you are going to come through. So, devil, we believe our God will come through for us. We believe we will see the goodness of the Lord in the land that we're living in right now. We will see it in the name of Jesus. God, give us a renewed hope this morning. Our hope lies in nothing else but in you, Jesus, and through your name, we can defeat the enemy. Woo! I praise you for it now. May your word move in power. May everything that's dead in us awaken to the word of God that is going to be poured forth. May it move. May it do what you have designated, designed, and wanting it to do in the name of Jesus. We believe and we're ready to receive. Speak now, Holy Spirit. Hide me. May nothing of joy come through, but everything of the spirit of the living God that is fire. Do it right now in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Say, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Yes, 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 yes. All right, listen, I'm going to tell you, Stephanie, our precious one that always does the slides for us, Hey, could not be here today. Her dad, she's helping her dad in his health. So you're going to have to take notes, okay? They're going to have to take some notes. So get your pen, get your notebook. Ask your friend next to you if they can borrow some paper because you're going to want to take some notes today. It's good, that's good. All right, so listen, we've prayed, we've prayed through while we're passing through. And today... We're going to go through his name, through his name, through his name is the title of this message. And we're going to look at Psalm 44, 5, Psalm 44, 5. I've gotten it out of the Passion Translation just because I love the language of the Passion, the expression of the Passion here for this particular verse. You can look at it in whatever translation. Psalm 44, 5, this is what it says. Through your glorious name and your awesome power, we can push through to any victory. And defeat every enemy. Woo, let me just read that again. Alicia's got it all over her. Through your glorious name and your awesome power, we can push through to any victory and defeat every enemy. Mom, that is good news for you. 
through his name and his power. Listen, that debunks the statement that says, I am mom, hear me roar. Absolutely not. I have Jesus in me. You better fear my roar. I've got Jesus in me, so you better fear my roar because I can, through Jesus, push to any victory. And I will, through Jesus in me, defeat every enemy coming at me or my child. I love to say this. I say it often. To get to my kid, devil, you got to go through me. And I know so many of you, that's your story. To get to him, you're going to come through me. To get to her, you're going to come through me. Which is why we, do you understand why we have got to be, we got to take care of us. We got to get to us. We got to, we got to get to our stuff. Because the enemy's coming hard after our kids. And a lot of the times, the way he comes to our kids is through our own stuff, the stuff that we're not presenting to Jesus, letting him heal and restore. Through your glorious name and your awesome power, we can push through to any victory and defeat every enemy. Thank you, God. Which is why this morning we have got to be dependent, not on a job, not on a husband, and listen, mama, not on that precious little sinner in your home. When you get my age, this is what I see a lot, y'all. Moms are making their life about their child. That is an unhealthy attachment. Let God break that off of you. You are not attached to anything but the vine. Praise Jesus. I am not, de listen, I say this a lot. I am not, de my happiness is not dependent upon the way my grown child just talked to me. Your happiness is not dependent on whether your child is the best in his class or her class. That is an unhealthy attachment, mom. You are not dependent upon anything but Jesus. John 15. We are connected to the vine. Listen, I love my mother and I wish my mom was here and I could, she could, hear me preach and see my kids be growing, growing up, and, but she's not. And she was an incredible mother, and she did what she knew to do with what she knew to do. <laughs> she got me in church. But I will tell you, my mother and father didn't have a great marriage, and so my mom was dependent. Her happiness, her life was dependent upon her children, particularly me. And praise God that I saw that and I, the Lord has given me a recognition of that. So therefore, I cannot do that because that is not healthy. I mean, my mom, I remember her being literally mad at me when I got married because I was leaving her. I mean, I remember that. Like she was angry and she would cry and that's not okay. And so I have told Jesus like I will not do that to my daughters like I'm not the, they're in college and I'm not calling and texting and FaceTiming or what do you do? my happiness is not dependent upon my children your happiness mom is not dependent upon anything but your attachment to Jesus your children are an offshoot of that dependency we have got to be dependent. What does that word mean? Determined. Influenced or controlled by something. Do you see why it has to be Jesus? Sherry, if you and I are controlled by our children and their reactions and their responses, we're going to be in the pit a lot of the time. 
But our God never changes, y'all. Our God, there is an endless supply of joy and peace. So my dependence, if it's on my kids, I'm going to be in the pit a lot. Because listen, especially girls, up, down, up, down, up, down. Woo, I, I mean, they, their, their moods give me whiplash. Anybody else? I mean, even your toddlers. I mean, you, your mood is giving me whiplash. Your husband. Yes. So you cannot be, you cannot be influenced or uncontrolled by anything other than your father. It also means relying or requiring the aid of another, reliance on another. Do you see? The only perfect place to put your dependence is on your perfect good father. God, I'm relying on you. I am not relying on these three kids to make me happy because, listen, they're going to break my heart a lot of the time. I am not dependent on my husband as amazing and as God, I know, like I know the next breath is going to come that he was the man that I was supposed to marry. I love him. He gets on my nerves with his opposite of me personality, but I still love him. But I am not relying on Todd Chambly. Not. I'm relying on you. Jesus, I'm dependent on you because, again, through your glorious name and your awesome power, I can push through to any victory and I can defeat every enemy. I'm dependent on you. Philippians 4.13, we know this verse. We know this verse over and over. It's on every, in every gym you go to probably. It might be in your daughter or your son's room. I can do all things. I can do everything. I have strength for all things. But what's the next part? Through Christ who strengthens me. Through, we tend to direct our focus on the things. God, I can do this. I can get through this PTA meeting. I can do it. I can do it. I can get through today and dealing with the preschool drama and the middle school drama and the high school drama. I can do all things. You can? Mm -mm. You got to have that next part is the most important part of the verse. But we focus on the things. Listen, it's only through Christ that you can do the thing. It's only through, it is only through Christ that you can parent a 22, 19, and 16-year-old. It's only through Christ you can, you can have a toddler and a baby. It's only through Christ that you can be married to the person you're married to. It's only through Christ. The shift in focus should be on that word, through it's only through Christ that things happen. It is a staying utterly reliant, dependent on Jesus that we have confidence that we can do all things. God, I, I'm confident that I can do all the things that you require of me to do every day with these children that you've given me. It's only through you I can be confident that through you I can get through this day with whatever I've got to pass through. Only through you, Jesus. Utterly dependent. Y'all, this word through in the Hebrew, it's a tiny preposition that states something really big. Tiny preposition, I can do all things through. It means in the Hebrew, the word in, E-N. In, on, among. It denotes a fixed position. The condition or state something operates from wow 
through E-N, the condition or state something operates from. That familiar verse now, doesn't that take on a whole new revelation? Our things that we've got to pass through only come because of our fixed position in Christ. So if you're trying to do all the things outside of that position, guess what? Striving, flailing, no peace, crazy, binging, coping. But through Christ, peace, belief, Hope and joy. Through, through. I can parent a 22-year-old and a 19-year-old and a 16-year-old because I am fixed and I am reliant fully on Jesus. Your kids when you are teaching them, when they're stressed about a test or they're stressed about a relationship, when we are so quick to say, you can do all things, baby, please look at them and say, only through Jesus today. You can deal with that today through Jesus. You can deal with the hard middle school girls through Jesus and we're gonna walk this out and every morning we're gonna plant your feet in Jesus, your dependency, you're relying on Jesus to come through for you. They can face the difficult situations. Do you understand, Mom, why you've got to believe it first? I can't sell you something that I don't believe in. I can sell you on the rodeo. And all y'all wanted to come to a rodeo because I love them and I'm so excited about them. And you're like, well, golly, okay. The same with your kids. Lisa, we know. Lisa couldn't have a baby, couldn't physically have a children. She's got four. So you want to ask Lisa about what God can and cannot do? Go ask her. You'll believe her. You'll believe God can do anything after you talk to her. You defeat him by the word, the blood of the lamb and the word of your testimony. It's powerful. You got to believe it. How, Katya, how, how do I deal with these teenagers? Let me go ask Katya who deals with teenage girls that come from really terrible dysfunction and yet God is moving in a crazy powerful way. Okay, Katya, I need, help me believe, help me believe I can survive. Talk to her. Through. Woo, y'all, this, this, y'all, this, I, I'm feeling, I, I don't know if this is coming off the stage, but I am feeling this. It, deep, I, I mean, oh, I just praise you in my weakness. You're strong, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Your fixed position in Christ. You got to believe it first before you can sell it to your children. You've got to, you can, you can put on, you can act. But let me tell you something. Your kids believe it if you believe it. They know when you don't believe something. Is there something else I can help with? <laughs> yes, there is. Get out of my life. <laughs> Devil, you ain't going to distract. It is out of our position. And our belief in our position that we can walk our kids through. Teaching our children about this dependence, this confidence that they can have in Christ. The most beautiful picture I can give you is in scripture, and we're gonna look at this scripture today. And it's the very simple Bible story, David and Goliath. Some of you might be walking your kids through. I would tell you, please don't steer away from the big stories in the Bible because they're scary and there's a bad guy and there's a mean guy. This ain't Hollywood. 
teach them these, these stories. David and Goliath is one of the most beautiful pictures of God dependence that I can give you to just drive this message home. So, so we're going to look in um, 1 Samuel today, and I'm, I'm going to give you some scriptures. I'm going to read some, but, but you're just going to have to go look at it for yourself. 1 Samuel 16 and 17. I'm going to look at, we're going to start in 1 Samuel 16, verse 14 to start this story, this, this picture of through Christ, just bringing this home. 1 Samuel 16, I'm going to start in verse 14. Now the spirit of the Lord had left Saul, and the Lord sent a tormenting spirit that filled him with depression and fear. You've heard me talk about depression because that's been something we've had to walk through in our family. Do you see what they, this, the word just called depression? A tormenting spirit. You want to know why I tell you you fight depression with the power of the name of Jesus? You fight it. It's a spirit. And praise God for medicines and counseling. All that's great. Those are supplements. You call down that spirit. If it's in your home, if it's over you, if you fight it, it's a tormenting spirit. The Bible tells us what it is. The spirit of the Lord had left Saul. Ooh, that's, that's tragic. And the Lord sent a tormenting spirit that filled him with depression and fear. Wow. And remember David's summation. David says this um, in Psalm 51. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. I just found that interesting that David says that in Psalm 51. And I wonder if it's because David knew firsthand what it looked like for God's spirit to leave somebody. David's saying, he's crying out in Psalm 51. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. I believe it's because David earlier in his life saw what that looked like tormenting fear and depression. Now, David saw that, and look at um, verse, six, verse 18. One of the servants said to Saul, one of Jesse's sons from Bethlehem is a talented harp player. Not only that, he's a brave warrior, a man of war, and has good judgment he is also a fine-looking young man, and the Lord is with him. Mom, what do people say about your kids? Do you ever take the time to listen? Do you want to know? Now, I'm not talking about man's opinion. I'm talking about those that you have given permission to speak into your life. Ask them. I got three kids, and they all have social media. What do you see? What do you see about my kid? What do you see? And is it the same thing that God's showing me? What do people say about your kids? That's a brave question to ask. You see my kid on social media. What do you believe she's struggling with? And see if it lines up with what God's told you. Again, I'm not saying depend on, Put your trust and even your ears on people that you don't love and don't have permission to speak into your life. Stacy Parker has permission to speak into my life. Stacy, what do you see? What are you seeing? What are people saying about your kid? They said, David is a brave warrior, a man of war, has good judgment. Oh, Lord, please let that be said of my kids. Oh, because I'm telling you sometimes he's also fine looking young man and the lord is with him that's the most important part the lord is with him now remember david was only five, five they, some some commentators say between 15 and 17 year, years old between 15 and 17 years old do people say this about your 15 to 17 year old may it be said 
May it be said of my kid. All these things were said of David. The Lord is with him. Hopefully what those in your inner circle say about your kid validates what you know about them. But listen, even David's own father didn't remember him. David's own father looked over David when, when, they, when Samuel was coming to call forth a new king. Now let's go to chapter 17. Here we go with the scene of Goliath. Goliath is taunting the Israelite army. David's three oldest brothers were already in Saul's army. David was the Aaron boy, as we see in chapter 17, verse 15. It says, he went back and forth so he could help his father with the sheep in Bethlehem. So David was in basically the Aaron boy. He was the forgotten last child. <laughs> Anybody have a last child? Bless their hearts. I'm just like, Lord, I got enough with these two girls. Thank you that right now nothing's going on with John William. Please, please. Thank you, John William. Nothing's going on with you. Anybody, I mean, I can only handle so much going on with one kid or two, you know. And that last child, bless their heart, just make do. (laughs) Oh, he's going to be in therapy. He's really not. Oh, let's look at verse 22 through 27. David left his things with the keeper of supplies and hurried out to the ranks to greet his brothers who were already serving in the army, in the military part of Saul's army. As he was walking with them, Goliath, the Philistine champion from Gath, came out from the Philistine ranks. Then David heard him shout his usual taunt to the Israel army. As soon as the Israelite army saw him, they began to run away in fright. Have you seen the giant, the men asked? He comes out each day to defy Israel. The king has offered a huge reward to anyone who kills him. He will give that man one of his daughters for a wife, and the man's entire family will be exempted from paying taxes. David, verse 26, asked the soldier standing nearby, what will a man get for killing that, this Philistine and ending his defiance of Israel? Who is this pagan Philistine anyway? That he is allowed to defy the armies of the living God? And these men gave David the same reply. They said, yes, that is the reward for killing him. The same reply. I think that is referring to the fact that David and others kept asking. David was the annoying little brother. He was the annoying little brother. Look at verses 28 through 31. But when David's oldest brother, Eliab, heard David talking to the men, he was angry. What are you doing around here anyway, basically, you errand boy? He demanded, what about those few sheep you're supposed to be taking care of? I know about your pride and deceit. You just want to see the battle. Now see, others spoke highly of David, but his own siblings did not. I know about your pride and deceit. You just want to see the battle. Verse 29, what have I done now, David replied. I was only asking a question. Look how the Bible puts in just some real life scenarios. Anybody, what have I done? What what, what did I do? I was only asking a question. Verse 30, he walked over to some others and asked them the, the same thing and received the same answer. Then David's question was reported to King Saul. I wonder who told on him. Somebody told on him. Then David's question was reported to King Saul, and the king sent for him. Uh Uh-oh. His brothers are aggravated. They scoff at him and basically tell him to get lost. Go go tend to your sheep, David. You're a sheep, sheep boy. Go on. Go your sheep boy. But David will not let it go. Anybody got one of those kids? They just won't let it go. Let it go. That was David. David's trying to convince him. He's trying to convince them. And look at verse 32 through 37. Don't worry about that Philistine. So David gets in Saul's presence. 
Don't worry about this Philistine, David told Saul. I will go fight him. Don't be ridiculous, Saul replied. There's no way you could fight this Philistine and possibly win. You're only a boy, and he's been a man of war since his youth. But David persisted. See that last? Being that baby served him well here. His birth order served him well. I have been taking care of my father's sheep and goats, he said. When a lion or a bear comes to steal a lamb from the flock, I go after it with a club and rescue the lamb from its mouth. If the animal turns on me, I catch it by the jaw and club it to death. I have done this to both lions and bears, and I'll do it to this pagan Philistine too, for he has defiled the armies of the living God. The Lord who rescued me from the claws of the lion and the bear will rescue me from this Philistine. There you go. There you have it. David's fixed position. Here it is, David's confidence, his utter dependence and reliance on his position in Christ. The Lord will rescue me. All right. What does Saul say? Then Saul consented. All right, go ahead and may the Lord be with you. Maybe it was Saul just getting tired of David. Maybe he was like, good, go get killed. Any of y'all had to say that you're going to do it your way? Fine, go ahead. Got one of those. Go ahead. You know so much better. I'm only 52. I don't have any experience in this. You are all knowing. So go ahead. Mom, sometimes you got to let them go ahead. right? Sometimes you just got to let them go ahead. Go ahead. So this was, who knows the reason, we're not told the reason Saul consented, but what I want us to see here is Saul thought he was crazy, but David's reliance and dependence is unbelievable. 15 to 17 years old, David wasn't afraid because of where his dependence lied. Lied, I can do all things. David didn't stop. David had no David confidence. He had God confidence. He had God esteem. I can do this only through. Let's keep reading verse 38 through 40. Then Saul gave David his own armor, a bronze helmet and a coat of mail. David put it on, strapped the sword over it, and took a step or two to see what it was like, for he had never worn such things before. I can't go in these, he protested to Saul. I want you to underline this, or I need you to highlight verse 39. I'm not used to them. So David took them off again. He picked up five smooth stones from a stream, and put them into his shepherd bag. Then, armed only with his shepherd's staff and sling, he started across the valley to fight the Philistine. Mom, with a sling in his hand, he started across the valley towards the Philistine. Remember last week I said, do it afraid? I believe David was afraid. But I believe his utter dependence on what his ability to do through, what is our verse today? Through your glorious name and your awesome power, we can push through to any victory and defeat every enemy. You think David knew that? You think he knew that? He had his weapon in his hand. Listen, mom, every morning you need to wake up and put a weapon in your hand. And you need to expose it. David strapped it on him. Some say it would have been strapped right. His sling was right in the front. And he was running towards. Mama, you better put your sword off of your mouth, out of your mouth. Expose it to the enemy every day. We have got to have our weapons 
Ephesians 6 tells us what our weapons. Does the enemy know that you know what the right weapons to fight with are? Does he know? Is he scared of your weapons? We have a sword. Are we using it? We've got a sword and a shield. Everything else is fitted on our body. Peace, right? The shoes of peace. I've got to fit my weapons every morning. I am fighting for peace some days, y'all. Fighting for peace. So I've got to put those, that weapon of peace on. Do you know peace is a weapon? It is a weapon. Put it on every morning. Put it on your child, but put it on yourself first. When you're in a plane, what do you do with that thing that comes down? Who do you put it on first? Yourself. Because if mama's going down, the kid might probably is going to go down. Give yourself peace first. So let me, let's keep reading. Verses 41 through 47. Goliath walked out toward David with this shield bearer ahead of him, sneering in contempt at this ruddy-faced boy. Am I a dog, he roared at David, that you come with me with a stick? And he cursed David by the names of his gods. Come over here. I'll give your flesh to the birds and wild animals, Goliath yelled. Verse 45. The whole crux of this message lies on these Um, this scripture right here. David replied to the Philistine. Sometimes you got to reply to the enemy. You come to me with a sword, spear, and a javelin. It's pretty scary weapons. But, David's going to use his butt right here. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of heaven's army, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defiled. Today, the Lord will conquer you, and I will kill you and cut you off your head. And then... I will give the dead bodies of your men to the birds and wild animals and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel and everyone assembled here will know that the Lord rescues his people, but not with a sword and a spear. This is the Lord's battle and he will give you to us. Are you freaking kidding me? Mama, sometimes you read that story to your kids. Sometimes just read it to yourself. Do you, do you, I mean, just that we could go home, never hear another sermon again on those two verses. Holy moly. Oh my goodness. Goliath's weapons are pretty scary. (laughs) And I love that they're named in scripture, a spear, a sword, a javelin. They are pretty scary, but David wasn't scared of those weapons because his reliance wasn't in a weapon that you could see. His reliance was on a weapon that you can say. The name of the Lord, his God. That's where his dependence was upon. Yahweh God of the armies of Israel. I mean, are you kidding me? You will never defeat an enemy that you're fighting with anything in your hand. It's with the weapon that's in your mouth. Jesus. Through your name, Jesus. God, I don't trust this kid, but I am believing that through your name, she is going to walk through this and come out as pure gold. No, 
nothing that I'm fighting in my hands. God, I am running to you in confidence. Listen, David, I believe he probably was a little shaky in his boots, right? But his confidence and dependence trumped all of that. Mom, do it afraid. The weapon in your mouth is so much greater than the enemy before you. The weapon in your mouth, that confidence. God, that's why you've got to be so sure of your God and what your God is able to do. Not that your God will do, but that your God could do. You've got to be so confident in that God that no matter what you are not shaken, whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? The God of angel armies is on my side. Whom shall you fear, mom? I don't care what they're doing. If you are praying and believing and interceding, asking God, he will come through. We don't know when, we don't know how, but he will come through through. David, I come against you. You fill in the blank. Every morning, y'all, you know that verse in Proverbs 31, you know, we always hear about the Proverbs 31 woman. I've I've preached on the Proverbs 31 woman. I need to bring that teaching back. It was amazing and incredible. But there, that, that, there's a part in that verse about, you know, we all want to be the, you know, she's known in the city and she's a woman that you know spins clothes and does I don't do any of that the part of her that I want in my life right now that I'm having to hang my hat on is that this is this she has no fear of the future I don't care about spinning clothes right now I I don't even care that I'm I'm known through the city that my husband is known. Joy, right now, I want to be known. God, I, I want to be known that I have no fear of the future because I do. That's my greatest fear every morning. God, these kids, these grown kids with the freaking ability to have free will, can't I just control what they watch, they see, they eat? See, moms of toddlers, why I say, can I trade with you? I controlled. No, you're not watching Hannah Montana. We're watching Little House on the Prairie. <laughs> and y'all, it's the cutest thing ever. Y'all, Sydney, 22 years old. Your kid, your, you saw it, you saw it. Your kids will crave what you feed them. 22 years old, Joy saw it. She posted it on her Instagram story. She was watching Little House on the Prairie last night and the night before. Todd and I were at Waffle House with her last night. She's like, we got to hurry up home. I got to, I, got, I, I started it season one. I'm like, Sydney, we went through every season when you were a little girl. 22, they will, they will crave what you feed them. They will crave what you feed them. So no, we're not watching Hannah Montana right now. Not that there's anything wrong with Hannah Montana. We can maybe watch an episode here or there, but we're going to feed your, I'm going to feed your little house on the prairie. Or I'm, what, fill in the blank. I don't even know where I was going with that. <laughs> fear, yes, fear, joy, you're not fearing. I'm not gonna fear because I, I do. I fear their choices. That's the choices. But see, look at that. She's making a good choice. Thank you, Jesus. But free will is scary. Toddlers is much easier because you can control that. I can control a lot of things. This free will so every morning I have to surrender. God, I'm afraid. I'm afraid of their choices. I'm afraid. But you have told me. The God of angel armies, he's always by my side. Okay. So whom shall I fear? So I come against you, fear of the future, in and through the name of the Lord. Every morning, that's me. What is it for you? I come against you, Sorrow, I come against you hopelessness. I, I come against you doubt. I come against you, name it. 
Don't be afraid. Say it. Feel your feelings, right? If you're feeling hopeless, if you're feeling sorrowful, if you're feeling joyless, God, today I feel sorrowful. I feel hopeless, God. But, right? David named the weapons that were exposed to him. I see your javelin. I see your sword and I see your spear. But, mom, Say what you're feeling. God, I'm bringing you this anger. I come to you. I come against you anger through the name of the Lord. I can conquer this today. David knew he could do all things. He didn't, obviously his, his brother said he, he knew his pride. So obviously his, David had a little bit of pride in him. He might have had a lot of good things said about him, but his brother said about his pride. So, they, But that served him well. Do you know that your child's greatest strength that God has given your child is going to be the very thing that enemy tries to use to sabotage and use against them? Do you know that? Gift of faith, right? Have you taken your spiritual gift test yet? If you haven't, you better take it. Mine is the gift of faith. It's the very thing the enemy tries to turn on me to fear. But now listen, I will believe and pray for you and I literally believe it to every toenail on me. I believe it for you. But for me, whew, I don't, the very thing the enemy has gifted you with will be the very thing the enemy wants to use. To, to kill you with. David knew I can do all things because of his dependence on his God. Through his name, I will defeat you. Look at verse 48. As Goliath moved closer to attack, David quickly ran out to meet him. Again, mom You face whatever it is head on. You run to it. You run to it. I am running, y'all, to the fear of the future of my kids. I'm running every morning to it. Sometimes crying, but I'm not willing to let it take me. I'm not willing. I'm not willing. I'm not willing. I'm running to the hopelessness sometimes that I feel. I'm running to it. The sadness, the joylessness, I'm running to it. I'm not willing to let it take me down. I am not willing, mom, tenaciously fight for your freedom every morning. Run towards the enemy head on. David did because he knew who he was running with. And he knew what he was running through. Now, I want to go back for a second. We're going to end here. I want to go back to verse 40. Shepherds in the east would carry a slingshot and pebbles for the purpose of driving away or killing the enemies that prowled on their flock. That was, that was very known in those days. In verse 39, Saul tries to fit David in the right armor, in the proper armor, he says, in which a soldier goes to war in. Saul's like, I don't know if he's doing it. It seems he's doing it for a good reason. Like, it seems like he is. He, he's, Dave, Saul gave David his own armor. So he, the king, he's given him his armor a helmet, a coat, and David puts it on. What does David say in verse 39? I told you to highlight it, underline it, or something. David says, I'm not used to them. David takes off what he's not used to and reaches for what he knows how to use. He didn't know how to fight in those weapons. 
or with those weapons. He was confident in what he knew worked. Let me ask you, Mom, what weapons are you picking up every morning to fight with? What is the enemy clothing you with in the morning? Trying to say this will make the fight easier. And because you're so used to it, God is saying, I'm giving you, here's my weapons. But because you've coped with these weapons, this armor, for so long, you don't even see the right weapons in which to fight with. Generationally, I just, we've just always coped with, I, I'm going to do it myself. I'm going to put, I'm going to carry these children. I'm going to do it myself. I'm going to control this situation so much. I'm just going to control it. And God's saying, here, surrender. This is so much better. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. But this is so familiar. No, anger, I'm just going to get angry. I'm just going to get, I'm just going to yell because that's what my mama did. I just, and God's saying, peace. I'm offering you peace. I know you got, I know, Joy, you got a lot to say. But if you just shut up and walk in peace, it, it, it fits so much better. And it will take down the enemy. What are you clothing yourself with every day? What is it that you have grown so accustomed to? You have grown so accustomed to the counterfeit that you don't see the real thing. What is it, Mom? Pick up the weapons that God is offering that you know will work. Paul's weapons in 2 Corinthians 6, 7, we faithfully preach the truth. God's power working in and through us is your weapon. We use the weapons of righteousness in the right hand for attack and the left hand for defense. Right hand is our offensive, our offensive weapon, the word, our sword. And the left is where our shield is for our defense. Those are the weapons that you must put on, but you have got to take on the armor that you've just been doing for 25 years, for 35 years. You have got to take that off. Oh my gosh, I'm triggered. My kid was left out. I'm triggered. So I'm just going to put this, this, this armor on and I'm going to fight it this way. God's showing you. Why are you triggered by that? Oh no, my kid was... Uh, failed my kid my kid struck out oh my god oh, it's the worst ever she's a failure no mm -mm. right what is the enemy trying to clothe you with to make you cope with all the things that you're facing take them off he is offering you the right weapons those are our go-to weapons, but we're so quick to put on the familiar weapons or the familiar armor, I mean, the familiar armor to fight with. God is wanting to undress us today. He's wanting to properly give you the right weapons to fight with. Let go of the control. Let go, let go of the control. Let go of the fear. Let go of it. Lastly, I want to look at 1 Samuel. We're going to come back to that. 1 Samuel 17, verse 50 through 52. 
So David triumphed over the Philistines with only a sling and a stone, for he had no sword. Then David ran over and pulled Goliath's sword from its sheath. David used it to kill him and cut off his head. Do you see? The pebble didn't kill Goliath. The sword killed Goliath. The pebble didn't kill. David used his sword to kill him. Your sword, as the weapon in your mouth, will kill control. Your weapon in your mouth will kill fear. Your weapon in your mouth will kill joylessness. Your weapon in your mouth will kill all the things the enemy is trying to make you fear. David used it to kill him and cut off his head. When the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they turned and ran. The men of Israel and Judah gave a great shout of triumph and rushed after the Philistines, chasing them as far as Gath and the gates of Ekron. The bodies of the dead and wounded Philistines were strewn all along the road from Sherem as far as Gath and Ekron. It happened just as David said it would. It happened just as David said it would. Through the name of the Lord, I will defeat you. Proverbs 3.26, For the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being caught. Mom, how are you fighting the Goliaths in your life? How are you passing through How are you passing through? Because as you're passing through, you, like me, are fighting many Goliaths. Maybe some of you are so used to the chaos that you don't even know peace could actually be the thing that you put on every morning to fight. But you're just fighting the chaos with your own chaos is what I've always known to do, right? What's your twilly? Y'all know my twilly. You got a twilly in you too. Whatever your last name, your maiden name is, that is a, some, a lot of the way you, used, you choose to fight. The way your mama did and the way her mama did. It's what we know. David was so familiar with the right weapon because he knew the enemies he had killed before using those weapons. His confidence, though, was not in his weapon. Remember, it will be in and through the name of the Lord that you are defeated today. Some of us are wielding the wrong weapons, and we've been wielding them for so long that we do not even know the right weapons to put on. God is trying to un clothe you with the wrong weapons and pieces of armor and clothe you with the right weapons but you have got to be willing to take off the wrong pieces and that's hard you've got to be it's hard to see your kid fail it's hard to let your kid walk through something that you don't listen one of the things beside mother should be rescuer You are not your child's rescuer. You're not. I can't tell you how many times I remember a bus situation. Anybody, kids, ride the bus? Listen, I love the bus. Don't throw me or email me. Lots of hard things happen on the bus. Lots of things are hurt on the bus. And for my kids, we did the bus. And I remember one incident, this little boy was cussing, saying the S word, which John Williams said is shat. I know what the S word is, it's shat. It's like, yes, you keep thinking that. And Sophie was on the bus with him. And big sister wanted to rescue her brother from the boy saying shat on the bus. And mama, of course, wanted, I'm just gonna take him off the bus. He's just not gonna ride the bus. But y'all, the Lord would not, I chose to not, fight 
and rescue my child. Sometimes God will tell you to step in. Sometimes. But a lot of times, God's saying, do you trust me with them? Do you trust me? Some of you have texted me, emailed me, Joy, I gotta send my kid to public school. Am I gonna survive? Are they gonna survive? Guess what? If God has told you to send your kid to public school, yes, they will survive. Oh, as long as I know Jesus, I know they'll be alive. I mean, they will survive. You aren't the rescuer. Stop rescuing your kids. And some of you keep trying. Sometimes the right weapon might be for you to step back and say, God, you're going to do it. You're going to do it. But we keep putting on that control every morning because our mama did and our grandmama did. And so we don't know anything but control today. Let it off. What are you fighting with, mom? What are you fighting with? Start fighting with the right weapons. Take off your old coping patterns. Take off the old ways of fighting. The invitation is a beautiful way to fight through the name of the Lord your God. Through him, you can push back your enemies and their enemies. Through him. Psalm 44, 5, I'm going to read it again. In the New Living Translation this time, only by your power can we push back our enemies. Only in your names can we trample our foes. The NIV says, through you we push back our enemies. Through you we trample our foes. Mom, it's not through anything you do. Only through the weapon of Jesus on your tongue and the sword in your right hand. I want everybody to stand this morning. I felt the Lord wanted us to leave a little bit of time to pray. And we have a prayer team. If you need extra prayer after this, listen, I've said this before, your, your small groups are time for y'all to all talk and talk through and, and let everyone talk. But your small groups are not counseling sessions. If you feel you need extra counseling, come. I've got a list that is amazing. From this church, from Riverstone, if you feel you've, there's just something just so heavy in you, on you, please come see me. Don't don't necessarily take it in there and let spirit lead, but you know what I'm saying. Right now, we're gonna have some time. And then if you need extra prayer, Joanne, Stacy will be here. If you need extra prayer, I'll be here. And if you think even beyond that, you need extra prayer, come see me. But right now, I just want everybody to close their eyes. And I'm not going to make anybody raise their hand. You know who you are. You know who you are. If you have been fighting the Goliaths in your family, in your life, in your household, with weapons that your mama fought with, that your grandmama fought with, or that you have just, because everything has been so hard and chaotic, you have just, that you have allowed the enemy to clothe you and you don't even know it, please pay attention to spirit right now. Knocking on your heart saying, let that weapon go. Take it off. I want you to not get used to that weapon any longer. I am offering you the right weapons to fight every battle every one of your children are facing, every battle that you are facing. I am offering you the right weapons with which to fight that battle with. If you feel Spirit is speaking to you, I just want you to listen. And I want you to ask him, God, I ask you right now to name every piece of armor that these moms are fighting and passing through their Goliaths with that is not the proper armor to fight with. Spirit, unyoke them right now. Reveal it. Expose it. Praise you, Jesus, for the exposure to unfit ourselves. David knew. Wait, 
He walked around and he's like, wait, I'm not used to it. Right now in the, in the spirit realm, right now with every mom here, God, help them know, name it for them right now in the name of Jesus. Give them a name for it right now and help them see themselves literally taking that piece of armor off and you holding out your hand with the exchange. Here you go. Thank you for taking that off. Mom, I see him unyoking so many of you right now. You are taking off pieces of armor that were never fitted by Jesus. You're taking them off. Now I want you to, I want you to see, I just see this so heavy in the spirit. I see just this pile, like literally right here in front of this stage of old coping patterns, old pieces of armor that are not put on by Jesus. And I just see this big pile and I see the spirit of God just torching it, lighting them up. Nothing's gonna be left of them but ashes. So even if you wanted to, you can't put them back on. Spirit of the living God, thank you for unyoking, unaccessorizing some of us, we, 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 we wear it as, a, as a, a beautiful necklace, like this control and this fear and this, this it's just all, it's, we've, we've grown so accustomed to it, but not anymore. It's a big pile of ash. Jesus, the weapons of our warfare that you want to give us are mighty in pulling down strongholds in the name of Jesus. That's what I want you to clothe me with, God. That's what I need. That's what every mom needs here. Fit them with the right weapons, your weapons, God. Right now, I see you doing it. And I praise you that it is done. Now, mom, it is your choice every morning. You need, to, you need to see, as I see so clearly, you need to see this pile of ash. And every morning when the enemy wants to put that piece of armor on you, you remember ash. It is ash. It is burned. God, what are you offering me today? I'm putting that on. That's gone. That's burnt up. That has been exposed. That generational coping method is gone in the name of Jesus. I choose you, Jesus. I choose your weapons because through your weapons, I can push back the enemies that are gonna come at me and my kids today. Thank you, God, for bringing that to every mind in the days ahead. Thank you, Jesus. You are so good. And we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Give God praise for doing what he can only do. Amen. All right, I love you. So, y'all, I, I wish I could lead worship. Amy, I wish we had a guitar and we could lead worship. But, again, if you need extra prayer, Joanne, Stacy, me, your small group leader, absolutely after. If you need some time, talk to them. Or come see me if you need a list of counselors because I've got some good ones. We'll see you next week. I love you. Woo! I